So where does this formula come from? When you study capillary action and you finally get into so kind of from cohesion, adhesion, surface tensions, and then you finally talk about capillary action, just kind of fluid moving up a particular tube, you notice that you come across this formula which states the height, H, okay, of how much a liquid goes up a particular tube, which is very interesting. So if you have a narrow tube and you place it in a liquid, it may so happen, just depending on the liquid itself and the adhesion and cohesion forces that are present, you know, a liquid might go up. And that's a very interesting concept. And now that height, okay, has a particular formula that we can obtain if we know several things. So the formula here that you see, which says two multiplied by, okay, this is um, the surface tension strength, okay, of the liquid. Sometimes it's just designated as sigma as well. So here I put it as gamma. The cos of the angle, the angle is kind of the contact angle, okay, so the liquid as it kind of moves up, it will have a kind of a curvature created kind of like a meniscus, okay, so you would have um, an angle which is kind of created, and I'll show you. And then in the denominator, you have density, you have the radius of the tube, and then you have gravity as well. Now, let's take a look where this exactly comes from. Now, I'm going to kind of flip this around so that you're trying to um, hopefully understand um, this, which might be a little bit easier to understand, although I'm going to use exactly the same thing for the liquid going up. So it's all based on surface tensions. So if you imagine, you know, if we have a cylinder, so let's imagine that this is a tube. And this particular tube uh, would be filled up with, a, with some kind of a liquid. Now, of course, this liquid would want to be able to flow downwards. But, you know, for the sake of this example, let's imagine that there is enough surface tension, which is going to be created here at the bottom. So right here, which is going to prevent, you know, all of this liquid from flowing down. So it's going to kind of hold it back up, right? So it's kind of, kind of looking like this, you know, and it's holding it back in place. So if you wanted to calculate Okay, for instance, you know, how much tension is needed to be able to um, withhold the actual liquid up above it, then we could go about it in this way. So we know that the liquid itself would have a certain amount of weight. Now, this particular weight is going to be mass times gravity. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, if we know what the liquid is, and we can find out what this mass is just by simply knowing the actual density. So density is mass times volume. So therefore the mass would be nothing else but the density times the volume, right? So you can substitute that back in here and you're going to get this equation. Now the volume is not very difficult to find because we have a cylinder. So, you know, this cylinder right here, so it has okay, a height, okay, H, Right, and we have a cylinder, so if we want to know what the volume of that is, well, the volume would just simply be pi r squared, because that's the base, right? So that's a circle. So it's the area of the circle multiplied by h, which is the actual height. Which now brings us to the equation for the weight, and it's going to be a lengthy one, but so be it for the moment. So it's going to be the density multiplied by pi r squared multiplied by h, and then multiplied by gravity. So that's your entire weight, which is stuck in that tube. Now, if this is not falling, then something is holding it back. Well, it turns out that there must be surface tension, which actually is holding this back in here. Now, the surface tension, of course, is going to be in between the adhesive kind of force that is between that liquid, and whatever this tube might be, maybe a glass. And what's going to happen is, you know, so that this tension, okay, which is going to be all the way around here, um, on this, okay, so that surface tension is going to be present all the way around that rim, right? So if you like, you know, an explanation of the surface tension in quite a bit of detail, I can put up a link up above there, okay, when you're suspending something on a liquid and why it doesn't fall through. So here we kind of have the opposite happening. So we have this surface tension and it's going all the way around. Well, 
If that's what's holding this up, now please remember that the force of the surface tension is equal to, and this is gonna be kind of gamma, um, or sometimes people use sigma in here. And so this particular, so this is the strength, which typically is given um, of a unit of force, which might be Newton's divided by, you know, a unit of, okay, the actual distance around, okay, and typically if it's an SI unit, would be in meters. And that would be multiplying by the actual kind of length which the surface tension is acting on. So in this case, the surface tension, because it's not falling through, so it's acting all the way around there. So it's kind of attached there all the way around that. So that would have been your actual length. So this is multiplied by the length all the way around. Now, it's only the vertical component which is gonna hold up the weight. It's not going to be the horizontal components because those horizontal components would cancel off. So technically, it, what you would have is, and this might be kind of like a, a contact angle within here, so you would have an angle, okay, so within, so now I'm gonna kind of draw this kind of like this, right, so you would have a contact, and what I'm drawing is, you know, this attachment right here, so this blue area right there, so that's what I'm drawing there. Maybe I should kind of make it blue right in this diagram, so let me put that in so that you know what I'm referring to. And so for this, you know, you have an angle, okay, so within here, so that angle, let's say this is the vertical, okay, right there. So this would have been the contact angle. Now, of course, this is the same angle over here, and we know that hopefully from, you know, going way back into kind of mathematics from grade nine or maybe even earlier, right? So those angles are the same. And that, that's exactly where that, um, force of tension is acting. So it's kind of acting in this direction, but we only want uh, its component, which is gonna be in the vertical direction, which is gonna be upholding the weight, which is trying to pull it down. So that's the reason why that we're gonna take all of this, we're gonna take all of this thing, and we need to multiply it by cos uh, theta. So that cos theta is um, that component, which is the vertical component, right, so that we have, so this is the vertical component with a Y component of that surface tension. So now that's my surface tension, okay, that's withholding, and this is, again, so it's L because it's all the way around, okay, times your, your gamma in this case, so your strength of your surface tension. And this is going to be counteracting what you see over here, so which is your weight, right? So I'm gonna duplicate this back so all of this is has to be equal to all of this. So these two things have to be equal if that liquid is not falling down, right? So this is what you have. Let me erase these brackets. They're not really needed. All right, so in that case, well, the L, okay, so within here, because it's basically a circle all the way around, is gonna be two pi R, so that's my L. And that now all of a sudden brings down my equation. So my equation becomes, so this is gamma multiplied by two pi r multiplied by cos theta is equal to the density, you know, pi r squared. You know, I'm gonna put the h at the end because I'm gonna isolate for it. So now if you wanna solve for this h right here, what you will have is, well, all of this is gonna go back in the denominator right, so it's gonna go all the way there. So it's gonna be gone from here, and it's gonna appear on the other side. So I'm gonna just kind of remove this um, in here. So that's all gone. So I just have now my H on the right-hand side, and now I've divided both sides by this. But now look what happens. Well, the pi is gone. One of the R's from the top is gone, so you only have one of these. And now if you write this out, so this, I'm gonna move the two to the front, right, so we have our gamma, so that's this, my two, I have my cos theta, and then this is divided by, this is the density, okay, times r times g. And what you notice is, okay, this is your equation for capillary action, but it seems, you know, I have done it in reverse, right? I've taken a cylinder, and it makes sense, weight is down, right? And then the tension is holding it back in. But the exact same thing happens with these capillary actions because in capillary actions, so this derivation is gonna be identical. 
If you now take, okay, and if you have some liquid, and now you're going to take this, okay, so I'm going to kind of borrow all of this, this whole thing in here. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it, bring it back down, and maybe what I'll do is I'll delete some of these things. Okay, so within here, so let's delete that. Okay, it's not needed at the moment. So if you take all of this and now you dip it in, okay, within here. Um, so the liquid is going to start moving upwards, okay, depending on kind of what liquid you have and then what, what's the radius, okay, of this um, whole thing. And, and you know, you also the radius right here, okay, so that was the radius of that particular cylinder. So this liquid is going to start to kind of move upwards and it's going to, you know, move up all the way up to a certain kind of height, right? And this is the height. Now, of course, you know, before I took the entire cylinder was the height of that. You know, we could have called that maybe, you know, height total. And this is kind of the height of the rise. Okay, so that's how much it rises. But now, all of a sudden, if you want to derive, you know, what is the height that it would rise up to, you're going to exactly work with the same thing. So here, the tension, except now the tension is in the opposite side. So the tension is holding this thing back in here, right? So the surface tension is holding this back in. So what you have now is you have all of this liquid, right, which is above now, you know, we're going to exclude if this has been dipped in. So this is the liquid which is above right here because the pressure over here and the pressure over here, these two pressures are the same. So we're just kind of withholding all of this by the surface tension, so it's by the adhesion, okay, of the walls between the liquid and the actual, you know, maybe glass or whatever this um, tube is made up of. So that derivation now is identical here the mass that you have, okay, is going to be, okay, um, sorry, the weight is going to be the weight of the liquid within this, this actual cylinder that you have. So that is your weight. So that's identical. So again, you know, so our weight was basically this. So I can just duplicate it. Of course, the H is in here. So I'm talking about the H rise that it has risen. So that's the weight that has risen upwards. And the tension has to uphold this. And again, so you're going to have, you know, this surface tension in this direction, right? Except now it's kind of holding it upwards and not letting it kind of sink down at all. So what you're going to have with, on the other side is that, you know, the force coming from the surface tension is going to be that multiplied by this is all the way around here. Okay, so that's the radius that we have in here. So the length, the entire length is two pi r, and then multiplied by the cos, okay, with the angle. Again, because we're only taking the vertical component that's upholding the weight so that it doesn't fall down. So these two things, as I just have done before, now you equate them, you solve for h, and there you have your equation for your capillary reaction. So that's one of the things that happens. Now, of course, it doesn't always rise. Sometimes it falls. It just depends on what liquid you are dealing with. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's going to rise and then sometimes it's going to be less than that. Okay. This is kind of the derivation that we have in here. So as long as the kind of angle okay, that we have in there is kind of acute, okay, it's going to be holding it back up there. So that's how you can come up with this particular equation. Now I'm going to try to, I know that there's other derivations of this. Sometimes they're a little bit more fancier. I'm going to try to put some links um, in the description below. And, you know, you can be a judge, okay, if you want to be able to see this, you know, which derivation was kind of helpful to you. Now you can go ahead, now use this um, as long as you know uh, quite a few things here, actually. You have to know the angle. You know, you have to know what the surface tension strength is for that liquid. You have to know the density, okay, and you have to know the radius, um, which is the radius of the two. And then if you have all of that, gravity is always kind of constant. So uh, once you have those, you can plug them in, and then you'll know how far something will actually rise. Um, and you can take a look here, you know, and break down this formula. So, you know, it's inversely proportional to density. You know, so the smaller the density, the higher that it will rise. 
um, you know, the smaller the radius, the higher it will rise. In fact, if you make the radius really tiny, you can, know, you can notice that it's gonna go up pretty up high. Um, now, if the surface tension, okay, is stronger and stronger, okay, then in those cases, it's gonna be harder and harder to try to raise something up, okay, because that surface tension won't allow, won't allow it. All right, so I hope that you found this useful. Okay, we'll see you in future videos. Bye, everybody.